the 2023 elections are over and government is properly constituted. I think we need to remind him that the authority to govern a country is derived from the people of Zimbabwe. And in this particular case, the people of Zimbabwe voted overwhelmingly for ZANU-PF and its presidential candidate, His Excellency President Idim Nangagwa. And that uh, if, in terms of the constitution of Zimbabwe, there was any dispute or any challenge which is legal from uh, Mr. Nelson Chamisa, he should have read section 93 of the constitution of Zimbabwe, which is very clear on the parameters, the timelines, the duration, and the processes that should be invoked in the case of a dispute in a presidential election. He did not do that, but uh, he keeps dreaming and dreaming, just like one of his uh, friends before, who now believes that if he has a dream that he's going to be an icon, that he dreamt about uh, the late opposition leader, uh, Morgan Trangerai, ending over uh, whatever powers, that all should be reminded that they should read the constitution of Zimbabwe. The elections were held in terms of the constitution of Zimbabwe, and that the constitution of Zimbabwe is supreme, and that they should continuously read section 93 of the constitution of Zimbabwe, which sets out the parameters, the processes, and the legal framework that is provided in terms of any legal challenge on an outcome of an election. That they should wake up to reality that His Excellency the President, Dr. Idim Nangagwa, is the head of state and government, commander in chief of the defense forces, and that the SADC summit will be held in Zimbabwe. He took note of the fictitious and fallacious mischaracterization of our nation's democracy and human rights by a regime change entrepreneur and sanctions lobbyist, Job Scala, at the recently held Geneva Human Rights and Democracy Summit. It must be reiterated that Zimbabwe is a democratic state with absolute respect for human rights and the rule of law. Job Scala was not a political prisoner. I want you to underline that. Job Scala was not a political prisoner. His falsehoods are in sharp contrast to his indisputable violation of the Criminal Codification and Reform Act. It must be underscored that in Zimbabwe, no one is above the law. Regardless of their political persuasion, his arrest was based on his criminal activities, given that he incited public violence and disorder, as well as violating his bail conditions. He is on record for perennially violating bail conditions. His willful, wishful, malicious depiction of the political situation in Zimbabwe is wholly and materially false. The nature of his criminality evoked the application of the relevant law and order processes. His conviction and acquittal in some of the cases attests to the impartiality and independence of the judiciary. And it would be anarchical if our laws worked in favor of a criminal's comfort. The genuine victims of human rights violations are the people of Zimbabwe who have endured the gross dehumanizing effects of illegal sanctions and therefore deserved spotlight should be beamed on the millions of Zimbabweans who have borne the brunt of the illegal Western imposed sanctions on Zimbabwe. Then uh, one of the members of the fourth estate
also wanted to see clarity about uh, one uh, Mr. Nelson Chamisa who abandoned his political party. That in a summary, I believe and we believe he's suffering from cognitive uh, dissonance. 